and welcome to a new video. Now this is something a little bit different to what I might normally do but I popped a poll on Instagram and on YouTube as well asking if it was something that you might be interested in and it was an overwhelming yes response so here we are. So in this video I'm going to talk to you about my personal top five Shapies World projects. Now all of you know if you've been here longer than two minutes <laughs> that the Shapies Well is one of my absolute favourite yarns to use and I get asked quite often what are my favourite things to make with the Whirl because some people seem to be a little bit intimidated by them because it's quite fine so I just wanted to share my top five favourite things that I have made with a whirl and they are all varying degrees of difficulty so we'll go into that a little bit as well but first things first if this is your first time visiting my channel then please do subscribe and also I am going to apologise in advance for any background noise but it is an extremely windy day out there today and my house backs onto a forest and so the wind whistling through the trees creates a lot of background noise so I do apologise for that but first things first, I'm going to start maybe selfishly with one of my own tutorials for a, a Shapies World project. Now obviously it's not just for Shapies Worlds but I've seen so many of these made now with a whirl that I just had to include it in my top five. So this one I would say is probably um, definitely a beginner project. I mean obviously you'd need to be familiar with the basic stitches and things but it is definitely a project that you can get your teeth into even as a beginner. So this one, I'm just hoping you can see, there we go, this one is the Granny Merge Blanket and using a Shapies Whirl it makes an absolutely perfect size baby blanket. So obviously all of the information, tutorials, patterns etc will be in the description box so make sure that you click the little arrow so that the, all of the information will drop down for you. So yeah, this is the Granny Merge. So it is a twist on, an, on a granny square, obviously. We're using traditional granny and also solid granny stitches and we swap and change them up so that you get this beautiful pattern. So I'm just hoping that that really shows up. And if you check the hashtag on Instagram as well, there is a hashtag of Granny Merge Blanket and there are quite a lot for you to have a look at in all different yarns and all different colourways as well. And I actually shared one on my Instagram this week which was done in a Shapies Whirl in the shade Melting Macaron and it looks absolutely beautiful. So yeah, this is the Granny Merge and it is a perfect beginner project but also looks far more complicated than it actually is. So. It's just a real good one to get you into um, granny squares and things. So that is one of them. The second one that I'm going to do, I haven't actually got one here, unfortunately, but I will pop some pictures up so that you can see. And that is the beautiful Shellscape shawl from Lisa's Attic. So it is a, a paid pattern and I will leave all of the information in the description box, but I made one just before Christmas using um, a whirl obviously and it was the yellow to black and it worked really wonderfully so it was one of one of these ones but yellow instead of the pink and I made that as a Christmas present for someone which was very well received it is a really nice pattern it is written really really well and it is available in English and US terminology which is really helpful and yeah, like I say, I'll have popped some pictures in for you to see. And my third one is from, you'll be glad to know, there is a written pattern as well as a video tutorial for this one. And this is the wonderful Lotus Flower Blanket from Hooked by Robin. So I know I've mentioned Robin quite a few times on my channel but her work and patterns are just really straightforward and the videos are really, really clear as well. So this is a circular blanket. Now I'm trying to think how best to display it because you might not be able to tell that it's round, <laughs> but it is a circular blanket. And if I just hold up a little closer, 
There you go. You can see that it is made up in the round of shell or fan stitches and yeah, it's just a beautiful round project which gives it a little bit of, um, it makes it a bit more unusual. You don't get many circular blankets. So yeah, the Lotus Flower Blanket is a really good one. And again, there is loads of pictures on Instagram for you to see using all different kinds of shades and all different kinds of yarns as well. So yeah, I haven't actually, if you followed my channel for a while, you'll know that I've had this blanket for about two years now and I just, I just can't give it away as a present. I know I will eventually, but at the moment it's just one of my faves and it just, yeah, it's staying with me for now. <laughs> so that is the Lotus Flower. And then again, this one I don't have one made up, but I will again, ooh, told you, no easy wind. Um, I will pop pictures in and it is designed by the wonderful Ivy and Mabel. And I featured quite a few of her patterns on my channel because I really love her work. It's always really delicate and it looks intricate, but it's all actually really straightforward. And it is called the Dainty Diamond Blanket. So, like I say, I'll have popped pictures in, so you'll be able to see around here somewhere. And I, it was actually one of the first things I made with a whirl. And I use the melting macaron for this particular project again, and it is just so, it's just really beautiful and such a gentle, pretty product once it's finished. And it would work in absolutely any shade of the whirl. It just, whirls just have that really nice drape about them that I haven't found with other yarns yet. And the gradient is always so soft and it just works really beautifully in things especially things that work centre out. I just found that the colours, the gradient is just so soft and gentle that it works really, really well for centre out projects. So that is the Data Diamond Blanket from Ivy and Mabel. Again, I will leave all of the information in the description box and all of the pattern links and things like that that you might want. And finally, my absolute favourite project that I have made with a whirl and you've probably guessed it's my favourite because I've had it in the background the whole time <laughs> and it is my mandala madness that I made with the rosewater cocktail which is behind me just here and it is a project that I didn't really intend to make but I saw somebody's picture of theirs that they had done and I was just totally inspired and just had to make one for myself but I didn't want to make it into the huge blanket that it is. I wanted to make more of a feature piece that I wanted to be able to display in my home, which is exactly what I've done. So yeah, let me just bring it a little closer. Now I see it's a little bit awkward because it is massive and mounted. <laughs> so I'm just gonna uh, see if I can get in shot with it. Not really, but anyway. So obviously I have mounted this. I had a friend of mine make up a beautiful solid wood back for this and then it has all been pinned on so that it can be displayed in the house and it's just a really unusual decorative piece and as much as it is complicated I'm not going to say that it was simple and straightforward because it wasn't it is a more advanced pattern but at the same time if you're not 100% sure with written patterns there are step-by-step -step tutorials on YouTube as well, which again, I will leave all the information for. But just having that step-by-step -step video tutorial just made it so much more bearable. If there was little bits that I wasn't 100% sure of, I could just nip and check out that tutorial. So I've just made, obviously, a section of it, um, and then it has been mounted. So I'm just gonna bring it in closer. So you can see all of the beautiful detail on all of the stitches and it just works so well in, in the Shapies whirl. It is probably one of the projects that I'm most proud of completing and it has got pride of place in the house. I do actually have to rotate it every now and again just so that I don't get any weird pulls in, in the yarn and things like that. So yeah, this is my mounted mandala madness. And it is, as I say, one of my 
absolute favourite projects I've ever made, but it is absolutely definitely my favourite project that I've made with a whoa. So those are my top fives. I'm just gonna pop this down because it is heavy. There we go. So those are my top fives, and I really hope that it's been useful. So we've got some beginner projects, you've got some more advanced projects in there as well. But I just once upon a time, Shapey's Worlds were actually quite difficult to get a hold of and that is, funnily enough, how I discovered Laurelyn at Snuffle Bean Yarn because she was the only person I could find at the time that had the Worlds um, available and in stock, everywhere else didn't have them. So I've gone back to her time and time again for so many Worlds now and again, supporting small business is just a, a little thing that I think is really, really important. So I will leave her shop information down below because she has lovely whirls. She also has the woolly whirls and the frosted whirls, etc. So do just check out all of the different ones that are available. But that is it for this video. I really hope that it has given you a little bit of inspiration, hopefully, and that you'll find it useful if you're not really sure where to begin with a, with a whirl and it might have given you a project that you really think you might be able to to get into. So I will see you again for another video very soon but thanks as always for watching and bye for now.